And welcome back to the Crypto Currently Show. Thank you for joining me. Today's just going to be a real quick one here. Experts, people. A lot of experts talking. It sounds very impressive, doesn't it? Right? You got a, you got a bunch of these old guys coming out. Not that they're old, but I mean, usually they're older gentlemen. Uh, you got a bunch of these guys coming out and they're, they're, they're saying all sorts of things and everybody reacts to it the way that we all probably should, right? If somebody's an expert on something, we should probably listen to what they have to say. The, the problem is, is, is that uh, I, I, I fear that a lot of people aren't making a distinction in their mind of what kind of expert uh, that person is. You know, for example, if you are in a horrible car accident and you know, you, you get half of your leg severed off and the crowd gathers around and people start screaming, is there a doctor around? And somebody steps up and says, oh, well, I'm a doctor. And it's like, oh, thank God. Uh, you know, do you, do, you, do you specialize in, in uh, you know, traumatic surgery? Oh, well, no, I, I, I have my PhD in, in, in uh, dance theory. It's like, well, uh, okay, well, you're, I mean, yes, you're a doctor, all right, but you're not this kind of doctor. You know what I mean? Like that kind of person would be of absolutely no use to you in that set of circumstances. Why would I bring up such a silly uh, observation? Well, I'll, I'll show you exactly why. Let's go to the computer. Is Starbucks having an ICO? Let's, this is just the, uh, the, the first little detail here. Starbucks executive chairman Howard Schultz raises a few eyebrows when he brought up cryptocurrency uh, during a conference call discussing the company's latest quarterly earnings. The former CEO told listeners that he believes that widely accepted digital currencies will arrive within the next few years. So that's, you know, that's positive. Schultz also expressed his doubt that Bitcoin will be one of them, saying, I don't believe that Bitcoin is going to be a currency today or in the future. Okay, so now listen, here's the thing. Coffee is one of the, the largest commodities that's traded on the open market, all right? That is a no-joke commodity. And so if you want advice on trading coffee, trading the futures or options contracts on coffee, look, Mr. Schultz there, that, that's the guy you want to talk to, right? He's, he was once the head of, uh, you know, the, the biggest buyer of coffee on the planet. I'm sure that that guy wakes up in the morning and, and eats, eats and breathes coffee. So... In that context, like if you're going to be trading uh, volatile markets on, you know, in coffee, that's the guy you want to talk to. But he's talking about cryptocurrencies. Uh, but it, it, excuse me, sir, but what? Why are you an expert on this? You're an expert on coffee, not on currency trades. If you were the Secretary of the Treasury or the Chairman of the Federal Reserve then I would want to hear your opinion on different types of currencies. But as it is that you're not, why don't you, uh, why don't you go get me my, my pumpkin flavored milkshake there, sweetheart? So this is the thing, you know, people, people talking about things that they don't know about. And when, when your reaction, if any of our reaction is to look at these people and be like, oh, you're an expert. It's like, dude, yeah, you're an expert, all right, but you're, you're, you know, you're a coffee expert. That's different. We don't, we don't need you over here. Anyways, next up, Discover CEO explains why credit card holders can't buy Bitcoin. Let's have a look at this. In an interview with Bloomberg, Discover CEO, and okay, now real quick, Discover, huge company. And we've talked in the past few weeks about the importance of what's going to happen to the market when the credit card companies are able to come in to the cryptocurrency market and make transactions on behalf of their customers and make money off of that. That's gonna be huge, but right now it's not possible. So let, let, let's look at this really quick, all right? Because now we are talking about somebody who deals with money all day. Check it out. In an interview with uh, Bloomberg, Discover, the company, the credit card company Discover, CEO David Nelm stated that for financial institutions to process payments for cryptocurrency traders and investors, they are required by the government to implement strict anti-money anti laundering systems and closely monitor the transactions of traders. Now listen, this is true. This is a huge concern, right? Can't have crooks. That's pretty basic. Let's dig in a little, little bit deeper here. 
For a company like Discover, that would lead, it would lead to many millions of dollars in additional compliance costs to address cryptocurrency investors. Neems also criticized investors in Bitcoin, calling them crooks that are trying to get money out of China or wherever. Evidently, and this is what I like about this article here, this is the, the person who wrote this article uh, had the presence of mind to immediately bring this up. He says, evidently, and this is the, the person who wrote the article, this is his voice now, evidently the generalization of institutional investors, retail traders, and individual investors, including Fidelity, Tim Draper, the Winklevoss twins, Barry Silbert, Mark Cuban, and tens of millions of other people in US, Japan, and South Korea are money laundering crooks can be considered as baseless condemnation of an investor with the global currency market. Now, it, here's the thing. Now, here is an expert. He's an expert on all things Discover Card, right? We should be listening to this guy, right? Because when, when his money, when, when the money of his company comes into cryptocurrencies, that's, that's going to be all she wrote. Not all of it, but well, it's, it's going to be a, certainly a game changer, an absolute game changer. So we should be hearing you know, smart sounding things out of this guy. This is an expert. This is a CEO of one of one of the biggest companies in America. And he's in charge of it. So you would think like, oh, whatever he says, that's gonna be golden. It's gonna be wise. It's gonna be something to, you know, give us that, that we can take and make decisions about our future based on that information. But no, what does he do? He calls Mark Cuban a crook. He calls you and me a crook. Isn't that weird? That's weird that you would say that guy. Expert guy. Thanks for, thanks for saying that, expert guy. Thanks for calling me a crook. Anyways, just a uh, just quick thought. Um, you know, thanks for watching the video. This was just a quick thought to kind of remind you, like, look, these are just people. These are, when people talk, they're just people. And sometimes somebody can be an expert in one thing and then be talking and running their damn lips about a completely different subject. And when that happens, like in this case, it's like, okay, well, I, 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 don't, I don't need to listen to you because you're, you're talking out of school. You're talking about things that you don't know about. And now you're, you're saying Mark Cuban's a criminal. Now look, the guy, the guy seems cocky and arrogant, but uh, he, it's, as far as I know, like they, that guy's done business the right way and you're calling him a crook. So uh, food for thought, enjoy the show. And uh, go down to the bottom if you want to click on, um, if you want to follow me on the daily podcast, there's a brand new podcast every morning, Monday through Friday, links down there below. Thanks for watching the show.